A few months ago, I started going to an indoor bike park, which has a very interesting feature called a pump track, which is mainly built for speed. However, at the wheel mill, they don't have a timer for this pump track, and I decided to build one for them. So before we tackle this project, we need to do a little bit of research of what kind of sensors can detect objects. So the photoelectric sensors are the best type for this process, and they're widely used in the industry. So which one's the right kind? There's through beam sensors, which is great for detecting objects at a large distance. Retroreflective sensors are good at detecting objects that interrupt light, but the range is a little bit reduced. And the last one is diffuse reflective sensors, which is great for detecting objects that, objects that reflect light back into the sensor or an emitter. The best fit sensor for this application is through beam, and that's because we need the distance between the sensor and emitter where the object might break is a very wide span of about 15 feet. So we need a separate emitter and a separate receiver mounted across from each other. And the other added benefits are the objects that's sensing, these sensors are unaffected by that object breaking that beam, and Operations not really affected by color, inclination, or other outside factors that might be in this indoor but kind of dirty environment. I'm going to spare a lot of the details on how this code works. It's pretty much just a stopwatch. But a more interesting feature is I'm using a 4x20 character LCD screen. And that's hard to read from a distance of even a couple feet if you're on your bike and you're just doing laps. So I need to make a way how to use the screen that I already have. We're trying to reduce our costs already. And how can I print a bigger font in number characters to the screen? So the way I'm doing that is I'm taking these seven arrays and I'm making custom character segments to build my numbers. So if you look, if you zoom in on the 4x20 LCD, you can see an array of 5x8 that makes up each character block. Now I can make a specific graphic in each one of those blocks and then I can build them line by line like four in a row or three in a row depending on the number size and I can build my numbers so you can see them from a distance. So I went with the NPN version of this photo sensor and built this schematic around it. Skipping all the assembly steps, we're going to move to our sophisticated benchtop testing platform. So I've aligned the sensors with the transmit and receiver pairs. They're easy to line up with the red LEDs. And you can see this is just the half track test that I would run. So when the green light is illuminated, you're allowed to trigger the start. And then when you finish the lap, it will round the time to milliseconds and print out the large display. So there's a little bit of delay after start and finish because the we don't want to capture a secondary trigger when the bicycle or the human is still trying to pass the object object sensing thing. And you can see on these sensors, they have some feedback to let you know they're working, uh, part of the industrial design that they come from, but there's a little yellow LED that will trigger saying that it's sensing. And then just a close up of when you trigger the timer, the average speed comes from the total length of the track, which is about 410 feet, divided by how long it took you to get there. And that's about it. Here's the inside of everything. LED, speaker, the microcontroller, which is just an AT Mega or an Arduino clone that I made, you can see on my website. And then just some screw terminals to make connections easier. So here's the install. Uh, it took about two hours, would have took less if we had actually surveyed it and had the proper wire lengths, but we just had to put a 2x4 in a couple places to mount the start and stop position receivers, and you can just see here's the one, which will probably get covered because it's likely to get hit by bike tires and stuff. So after that, tidied everything up and was ready for testing. This is Mike riding. I am not this fast. So again, when Mike breaks the first beam, 
The timer starts. And then the second stop beam stops the timer. So the same day we installed this, I tried it out, and then once everyone was out of school, the locals came. So about six kids were trying it out. And it works just fine. Uh, I think I'm going to remove the buttons so it's a little bit clearer that it's automated and it'll just work. All you have to do is start riding your bike. The biggest question I got is, why isn't there like a high score or a record keeping? And that question is easily answered because once one guy was running, the other guys would like spoof it to totally mess up the time. And essentially you'd, you'd have to have someone vet your time because you could just make one up conveniently.